Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about the best ways to study for your GED and pass it in record speed. My students have had great success following these six steps and you'll also see good results if you apply them in order. We're also going to be giving some tips on how to best guess at multiple choice questions that you may not have the best idea on. So make sure to stick around to the end, even bookmark this video because you might want to be referring back to this series. So I want to tell you about a student of mine, Tyler, and I'm going to use his story to explain how you can apply these six steps to your own studying. Tyler came to me when he was 18 and he'd been out of the school system for a couple of years. He had taken to the streets, doing some minor crimes, pulling cash app scams, things like that. But he wanted to leave that life behind and enter a trade school. For that, he needed his GED. He had taken it once already, but scored below the 145 needed on the math and science portions. Tyler described his first exam experience as honestly just being overwhelming. He felt unprepared. There was a lot of things that he wasn't expecting to be on the exam. He described his brain basically shutting down and even struggling with the really easy questions at that point. And that's something that we really wanna avoid is that test day anxiety. And a lot of that comes from feeling unprepared and seeing things that you didn't expect. So the first step in passing your GED, even though it sounds simple, is to have a thorough understanding of what to expect on the exam. Step one, know the subjects. If you haven't already, go to GED.com and register for a free account. You're going to need to do this anyways to schedule your exam, and there's a lot of great resources there. The GED exam is made up of four modules. I'm going to quickly run through each section here, but I'm not going to be reading everything, so make sure to pause the video if you want to see more details about an individual topic. Language Arts has three sections, including a written essay. It's 150 minutes total, spanning three main topics. First is Reading for Meaning, which asks you to understand, analyze, and compare components of written passages. Topic two, Identifying and Creating Arguments, asks you to understand the relationship between ideas and supporting elements, extending those ideas to new situations, and drawing conclusions based on evidence. The third section of Language Arts is Grammar and Language, which focuses focuses on word usage, sentence structure, and punctuation. Social studies is one section over 70 minutes covering three main topics. The first is reading for meaning in social studies, which expands on the language art section to include understanding how evidence supports claims in social studies and determining what is fact versus opinion. The second topic is analyzing historical events and arguments, which, just as it sounds, deals with forming connections within a historical event, along with understanding its broader context. A passage's point of view and potential for bias will also be covered here. The last social studies topic is using numbers and graphs in social studies. You'll be presented with data in visual form and asked to interpret it. You'll also need to be able to identify dependent versus independent variables, as well as the difference between correlation and causation. Science is also one section over 90 minutes with three topics. Similar to language arts and social studies, we start off with reading for meaning when it comes to science. You'll need to understand claims and evidence and be able to recognize terms used in scientific writing. The second topic revolves around experimentation and the scientific method, and the third topic, using numbers and graphics in science, asks you to apply given scientific formulas, determine probability, and use graphics to display information. The last and probably most feared module is math, but I think it's actually the most straightforward in knowing what types of problems to expect. There's a lot of detail here, so be sure to watch my upcoming video dedicated wholly to the math section. The math section is separated into two parts, and you can use a calculator on the second half. It's 115 minutes total covering four main topics. Basic math is, well, the most basic, and you'll need a good understanding of this for the following sections. The second topic is geometry, which includes calculating area, perimeter, volume, and the like, given certain dimensions. Basic algebra is where you'll find the letters mixed in with the numbers, and graphs and functions round out the math section. At this point, some people are gonna wanna start studying just methodically working through each section. Others are gonna wanna jump around from section to section, depending on what they're less confident in. But before you do any of that, I want you to test yourself. Now on this, you don't need to worry too much about the problems that you don't know. Just make sure to mark them and move on. Questions where you can make an educated guess, but you're still not 100% sure, mark those problems for review later. Ideally, you'll work through a whole test before going back and grading yourself. The point here is to get a baseline reading of what you do and don't understand. And the results here are gonna help guide your studying in the next steps. For Tyler, this meant taking practice tests on the math and science portions to figure out what he did and did not yet understand. You can find free quarter length exams on the GED website, but for the full practice tests, you are gonna have to fork out the $7 for each section. If you choose to purchase a study guide, which I'll give some recommendations for later, a lot of those include a full length practice test. There are YouTube channels that work through a whole exam. Just make sure to try to answer the questions yourself first before seeing what the answer is. The best method is gonna to be to find a full length practice test, and I promise it's gonna be a good investment for your studies. So after finishing his practice test, Tyler found out that he had a really good understanding of basic math, but he struggled with algebra. Now he was ready to move on to the next steps. Step three, shore up what you already know. So for step three, I want you to make a list of all the sections that you feel very confident in and that you've got most of the answers correct. 
You don't necessarily have to have gotten every answer correct, but they should be questions that you can easily figure out why you got them wrong. You should be going into exam day feeling like you are very confident in these sections. These are gonna be the bread and butter of your passing score. Studying for these topics should target those specific questions that you got wrong and learning the nuances of why you got the question wrong because you'll probably already have the foundational knowledge to connect those last few dots. So for instance, Tyler felt confident in his basic math skills, but there were a few problems that he missed, including the cubed root. But he knew what a square root was, he knew what to the power of three meant, so taking it just that next extra step to understand the cubed root was very easy for him. It only took about 60 seconds to make sure that come test day, he was gonna get that problem correct. Step four, get a general knowledge of what you're less confident in. It'd be wonderful to get a perfect score on this thing, but we're also not trying to spend the next three years studying. So in step four, we're gonna be working smarter, not harder. There's gonna be sections that everybody just feels naturally less confident in, and those sections are gonna have more basic questions and more advanced questions. Uh, here we'll be focusing on getting those basic questions answered while having maybe just enough knowledge to make an educated guess on the more advanced topics. Make a list of the topics that you feel little to no confidence in. Try to find at least two resources for each one of these topics, depending on your learning style. Some great references include the GED website for videos, practice tests, lessons, and links to online and in-person classes. Check for free local resources offered by your state, county, or municipality. Libraries if you'd rather not purchase prep materials. For tutors, ask around on social media for local tutors or check out tutors.com. I recommend the Kaplan books, but there's also a lot of other great study books out there on Amazon. Lastly, there's some specific YouTube channels you should check out that are gonna help you, including Crash Course, Khan Academy, Test Prep Champions, Michelle Revisited, and Ultimate Algebra. So for Tyler, when it came to algebra, seeing letters mixed in with numbers just sent shivers down his spine. But he came up with a plan. Come test day, he would take his initial best guess without wasting a lot of time on some of those questions and only return to them once he had gotten everything else completed. So he went into test day with a plan without feeling like he had to be perfect. As you approach test day, you'll need to test, repeat, test, repeat, test, repeat, test, repeat. The more times that you can expose yourself to sample questions and test yourself, the better, especially if you're working on your own because it's gonna be the only feedback you're receiving on what you're learning and what you're still struggling with. If you're still struggling with entire modules or you just need some accountability in your studying, then the final step is gonna be seek professional help. And we're not talking about a therapist here. For my students, it's just coming to me and asking whatever questions. For you, it might be finding a local tutor or some sort of online resource where you can get some of those questions answered. If you want, even leave your questions in the comments and I'll try answering them for you. All right, we're finally in the bonus round and I'm gonna be giving you some quick tips on how to best guess multiple choice questions for those areas where you weren't confident they are the more advanced questions that you're not gonna be spending a lot of extra time trying to figure out what the answer is. So if there's not a specific clue, like on a math problem where you know the answer has to be negative, but you really just don't have any idea, these are gonna help you out on those questions. Questions. So I'm going to run through these quickly, but if you pause the video, then you can see some of those examples for yourself. Number one, frequency of occurrence. Look for items that appear more than once in answers. Two, eliminate extremes. Eliminate the extreme answers on math problems when you have zero clue. It's not always the case, but usually the actual answer lies between the two extremes. Number three, similar choice. When two answers only differ slightly like a single word, choose one of those two. Number four, umbrella option. When one option encompasses the others or is more inclusive, like an all of the above answer, go with that one. Number five, avoid absolutes. Words such as always, never, every, all, none, etc. are usually red flags. Number six, most different. In some cases where the options are all similar, choosing the answer that most differs from the others might be the best choice. So a few weeks later, Tyler reached out to me and let me know that he had passed both his math and science portions of the GED, which is the main story here to never give up. Thanks for watching. Please let me know if this video was helpful by hitting the like button. I'll be answering any questions that you have in the comments and subscribe for future GED tips and tricks. After all of that, check out these other videos.